What's up everybody and welcome to another episode of Wrestling with Jonas. This is episode 7 and today we're going to be focusing on Progress Wrestling. So I've done a, a Progress Wrestling review before, chapter 77. Um, uh, this one is chapter 78, 24 hour Progress people. It was actually uh, filmed in November, not quite a month ago, the 11th of November uh, from the O2 Ritz in Manchester. Um, I plan to review every progress show going forward. Um, so uh, I know there was a, another one that took place a couple of weekends ago, uh, which I will be reviewing very soon and get that up on the podcast as soon as I can. However, this one from the 11th of November from Manchester, uh, we get the usual introductions and banter from Jim Smallman in the centre of the ring before our first match, which is the Pride of Wales, Eddie Dennis versus Speedball, Mike Bailey. So, uh, Eddie Dennis is a, an NXT favourite of mine. Um, he enters first to a raucous ovation from the fans at the O2 Ritz in Manchester, uh, following and uh, uh, followed by the, the popular speedball Mike Bailey, who is making his progress wrestling debut in this encounter. So, Dennis takes Bailey by surprise even before the bell rings. Uh, with an elbow to the back of the head, uh, Dennis lays in a stiff attack with a brutal lariat turning speedball 360 degrees in the air. Bailey strikes back with several impressive kicks and drop kicks uh, to take Dennis to the outside. Uh, plenty of strikes and drop kicks from the debutant Bailey here. However, he is caught in midair in the arms of Eddie Dennis off of an attempted dive through the ropes, only to be dumped unceremoniously onto the ring apron by the towering Welshman. Speedball is a very talented and experienced wrestler, having wrestled all over the world, um, especially in the last 12 months where he's uh, increased his profile. However, Dennis continues to dominate Bailey with uh, an impressive neck first throw across the ring um, and then covers for a two count. Bailey continues to lay in several stiff martial arts style kicks before hitting a standing corkscrew for a two count of his own. After a successful urinagi and a razor's edge type buckle bomb from Dennis, Dennis attempts an unsuccessful neck stop driver, which is one of his patented moves, uh, allowing Bailey to hit a second rope moonsault to the outside directly onto Dennis for a huge reaction from the fans. Bailey's super kick stiffs appears to be taking its toll on Dennis uh, as both men stand on the ring apron on the outside. However, it all appears to backfire when an attempted moonsault ends badly, uh, with Bailey landing heavily on his knees, setting up Dennis to hit his crucifix bomb for another close fall. Plenty of back and forth kicks and chops and elbows in alternate corners from both men leading to another close fall for Eddie Dennis. The Pride of Wales is starting to wonder what he has to do to put Speedball away. Bailey is able to hit a couple of impressive ultimate weapons, one of his patented moves, for a couple of close falls of his own. However, after missing and landing heavily on his knees from an attempted top rope shooting star knee drop, Dennis is finally able to hit his finisher, the next top driver, um, but only for a two count and the closest near fall of the match so far. The fans can't believe the fight left in Mike Bailey after that kick out. Dennis, however, is quick to react, picking Bailey up into a super next stop driver, finally uh, to put speedball Mike Bailey away for the 1-2-3 and the win in this hard-fought match against the spirited debutant. That was an excellent opening match that went over 20 minutes. I'm going to give that three and three-quarter stars out of five a very, very good match to uh, start the show. Next, we get Isla Dawn versus Lana Austin. Uh, you may have heard a lot about Isla Dawn recently, uh, with some of her matches being covered here on Wrestling with Jonas. However, Isla Dawn really impressed me in her last progress match against Millie McKenzie at Chapter 77, which I reviewed a couple of weeks ago, so please go back and listen to that, uh, which was an outstanding match before outside interference from Ginny and Laura Di Matteo caused an end to that match. Tonight, she goes up against Lana Austin in a progress wrestling debut. Both female wrestlers are experienced and well-versed competitors. Uh, Lana gets a brief upper hand at the start of the match with her own version of a hip attack, which she calls the Peach Kiss, only to be hit with a uh, German suplex by Isla Dawn, Isla Dawn sorry, followed by a very impressive Gory Guerrero special stretch, which Austin is finally able to escape from before hitting a Northern Light suplex onto Dawn to gain the upper hand. The match is definitely started to pick up the pace very quickly with Austin hitting the move of the match so far with a tilt a world jawbreaker for the two count. The match ends when Lo uh, Lana Austin goes to the top rope only to miss an attempted top rope across body uh, allowing Dawn to hoist Austin into a straight jacket electric chair with a bridge for the pinfall victory. 
This match went shorter than I was expecting, but a decisive win by Isla Dawn moves her one step closer to a possible championship match with the champion Ginny in the future. Both competitors shake hands as they leave the ring to a good reaction from the fans. Good two and a quarter stars here. Looks like uh, shorter than I was expecting, but the action was solid. Next, we've got Jordan Devlin versus Chris Ridgway. Chris Rid Ridgway is introduced as having a black belt in being as hard as fuck, and I can fully concur. Chris Ridgway is a six-year pro, and he is only 25. He has an MMA background, is fast becoming uh, one of the most exciting young talents on the British and worldwide indie scene at the moment. As for Jordan Devlin, I've raved about this guy a ton since starting his podcast, especially with his run as OTT World Champion, losing to Walter uh, after nearly a year run as the champ, along with its outstanding matches as part of the new NXT UK brand over the last few months. Uh, Devlin um, has it all um, as he's turned up the aggression and the attitude since early 2017, making him stand out as one of the most complete wrestlers on the indie scenes at the moment. Uh, this match starts out with an exchange of kicks, punches and forearms that look as stiff as hell. This match is definitely not going to be for the faint of hearted. Ridgeway ties Devlin up with a step over cross face, which Devlin is able to escape from before being knocked to the canvas with a stiff kick to the chest uh, from Ridgeway. Devlin makes a quick comeback with the Irish Hay Slam into a standing moonsault for a two count. Uh, both Devlin and Chris Ridgway are two of the hottest commodities in British and Irish wrestling at the moment and both are showing why that is in the first five minutes of this match. Devlin tries to get the upper hand with several shoot kicks to the torso of Ridgway but Devlin appears to have regretted his choice of moves as he is soon brought back down to the canvas with a dragon leg screw. This allow, allows Ridgeway to hit uh, back with several kicks and strikes of his own before Devlin is able to hit a Spanish fly from out of nowhere. Uh, Ridgeway comes back with kicks and strikes that appears to rock Devlin quite badly. Uh, however, Devlin is able to hit a huge brain buster followed by an attempted suplex only to be turned into a sleeper as a counter from Ridgeway. Devlin hits a slingshot cutter, a face wash in the corner before hitting a super quick Seito suplex before attempting a moonsault, which is quickly counted into a triangle choke, uh, which Devlin is just able to turn um, into a buckle bomb after lifting Ridgeway from the canvas. Some super quick action here, back and forth transitions from both wrestlers. Uh, Devlin hits a super quick headbutt for the two count, and after only eight minutes, this is already turning into the match of the night. Devlin goes for a package pile driver, only to be transitioned into an ankle lock by Ridgeway, uh, followed by a German suplex, an axe kick uh, to the back of Devlin's head, and a pile driver from Ridge Ridgeway for a two count. Uh, after which Devlin was able to shove Ridgeway into the turnbuckles, dazing Ridgeway enough to allow uh, Devlin to hit his patented packaged, packaged a pile driver for the hard-fought victory. That was an awesome match that went 10 minutes and was solid from bell to bell. Both guys took a hell of a beating with Devlin being rocked with several stiff kicks from Ridgeway before powering his way to the win at the end there. However, before Ridgeway could exit the ring, Paul Robinson made an appearance on the stage to address Chris Ridgeway with this statement. He, uh, Robinson goes on to say, 18 months on the sidelines, there was one thing I listened to, uh, that stupid mug in the ring and those two on commentary tell me that you've got a black belt being as hard as fuck. Uh, here's a fact for you, Ridgeway, I've got a black belt and I'm fucking hard. I've worked it out. Uh, you just think you're hard, you play a hard nut. You want to find a real hard nut, you come to Essex. In Essex, we've got a name for people like you, and that's a pretty boy. Next time in progress, next time progress are in Manchester, for you the bad times are coming. So that was uh, end of statement from Paul Robinson uh, to Chris Ridgway. Looks like those two are going to be having an encounter on a future progress wrestling show very soon going to give this match four and a quarter stars uh really solid match yeah quite hard to watch lots of uh stiff kicks and blows from both competitors uh ridgeway definitely one that i'm going to be keeping an eye on next we have david star versus Ilya dragunov and now we last saw dragunov at hello wembley uh, when he went toe-to-toe -to -toe with pete dunn in the second to last match of the night Dragunov was previously the WXW Unified World Champion in Germany for five months earlier this year. 
and is creating a name for himself for being able to put together amazing matches with just about anybody under any circumstances. The last time we saw David Starr was alongside Jack Sexsmith um, at Hello Wembley um, at the end of September in the Thunder Bastard match for the tag team titles. Uh, Dragunov recently received a tryout for the WWE when they toured Germany a few weeks ago, so we shall see if that leads to anything for this very talented wrestler. The match starts with some almighty chops and slaps, however Dragunov is stunned by a rolling senton and further chops sending him into the corner. Dragunov hits back with a German suplex to Star, followed by a series of running clotheslines into the corner before hitting a blue thunderbomb for the two count. Some inventive holes from David Starr in the match, uh, including a scorpion deathlock with Ilya's leg grapevined into a figure four, which looked as painful as hell. Star follows this up with a huge tope suicida uh, into, uh, onto Dragunov on the outside. However, Dragunov swerves a second uh, dive from Star only to hit with one of his own before hitting a senton onto David Star, who was seated at ringside. Ilya hits a huge leaping top rope sent on onto Star in the centre of the ring, but only gets a two count from that move. The two then start to pummel each other with super stiff uh, standing clotheslines. Uh, these two are knocking the living hell out of one another, and the fans, fans are getting to their feet with a standing ovation in appreciation for these two wrestlers. Before the music, our former Progress World Champion Travis Banks starts signalling an attack from uh, Banks onto both wrestlers in the ring for a double TQ to end this match after only 16 minutes. This was the first time we've seen Travis Banks since suffering an injury in the summer. Uh, Banks continues to beat down both Dragunov and Star before turning his attention to the ring crew and anyone else who dared stand in his way. Could this be leading to a possible feud with either uh, David Starr or Ilya Dragunov? More likely Dragunov in my opinion. Um, I know one thing is for sure and that, uh, a he that, that this is definitely a heel turn for Travis Banks. This should lead to an interesting couple of months ahead for progress with this feud being something to look forward to. We then get uh, a match for the Progress Tag Team Championship um, featuring Aussie Open, the champions, uh, Carl Fletcher and Mark Davis versus the Calamari Thatch Kings, um, the uh, tag team comprised of Chris Brooks and Timothy Thatcher. Both teams are introduced with Aussie, Open's, uh, Aussie Open the clear favourites with the Manchester crowd. Plenty of knife edge chops traded back and forth in the early going from both teams. However, Kyle Fletcher appears to tweak his knee following a second rope line sold attempt, which only glanced at Timothy Thatcher in the process. Both Thatcher then Brooks turn their attention to Fletcher's injured knee. Uh, Brooks applies a fantastic cross-legged motor lock to add insult to injury on Fletcher. Uh, Brooks and Thatcher expertly cut off the ring uh, until Fletcher is able to hit a Michinoku driver out of desperation, allowing him to make the much-needed tag to his tag partner, Mark Davis. At one stage, both Brooks and Thatcher are bundled to the outside, allowing Fletcher to hit a double dive onto both heels. Once back inside, the babyface team of Davis and Fletcher start to turn their attention, uh, start to turn the tide of the match, but only briefly until Davis and Thatcher trade forearms and eventually stiff headbutts in the centre of the ring. The pace of the match picks up with several close near falls for both sides and uh, several excellent double team uh, manoeuvres from both sides. Uh, the match does eventually come to an end with Mark Davis um, holding onto Timothy Thatcher on the outside, preventing him from re-entering the ring while Carl Fletcher is able to reverse an attempted condor clutch from Brooks into a roll up for the 1-2-3 and the win to retain their tag team titles. The match definitely picked up and turned into a good bout um, between the more established Chris Brooks and Timothy Thatcher against the young and exciting Aussie Open who retained their tag titles for the second progress show in a row. Next we have Trent Seven in his Atlas Division Open Challenge. Zach Gibson comes out as Trent Seven's opponent to a tirade of booze until Trent Seven starts to mock Gibson for his promo style. Uh, this was 10 minutes of hilarious back and forth banter from Gibson and Trent Seven until Gibson told the referee to start the match. However, as Gibson was handing the microphone back to his grizzled young veteran tag partner, James Drake, they managed to drop the mic on the floor. And while they were both staring at the mic on the canvas, Trent Seven hit Gibson with a crossbody block and covered for the surprise pinfall win to regain his, his Atlas Division Championship in only five seconds. 
Gibson, Gibson starts to blame James Drake for causing the distraction from uh, by dropping the mic uh, when the two starts getting into a bit of a shoving match in the centre of the ring, only for Gibson to get the better of that exchange, shoving Drake to the floor. Not sure what that means for their uh, tag team going forward. Um, but uh, th this could not be considered a classic by any stretch of the imagination, but for the back and forth promos and banter alone, this was golden and a must watch. Finally, we get the main event of the evening, Walter, the Progress Wrestling World Champion versus Mark Haskins. So Haskins enters alongside his wife, um, Vicky Haskins, to a hero's reception from the fans in Manchester. The story going into the match was that Mark Haskins was a uh, previous ro Progress Wrestling World Champion, but had to relinquish the title due to a neck injury. And tonight is his chance to regain the title that he believes he never lost. Walter comes down to the ring with everyone singing along to his entrance music and is accompanied by his ring camp stablemate Timothy Thatcher. Walter is the most sought after wrestler on the indie scene at the moment and he shows why in the early going with chops that floored Haskin like he was hit by a car. Walter continues the assault with stiff kicks um, and at one stage Haskin attempts a dive through the ropes only to be caught by the powerful Walter in midair before hitting an almighty chop to Haskin's chest, flooring him in the process. Walter nails Haskin with a huge boots to the head, knocking Haskins to the outside, which is where he stayed for a full two minutes as he nurses his neck and head, which uh, appears to be a bit of an injury for him there. When Haskins gets back into the ring, Walter hands, hangs Haskins upside down uh, across the uh, top turnbuckle before standing on Haskins' head and neck, bending him in half as Hask Haskins can only lay there at the mercy of Walter. Haskins is finally able to make a comeback with a series of kicks, eventually flooring Walter to get a little comeuppance. So from there, Walter attempts a sleeper hold and a power bomb, only to be reversed both times by the re-energised Haskins. Haskins is able to hit a dive onto Walter, however his uh, offence was short-lived as Walter smashes Haskins with a massive power bomb, but only for a two count. Walter applies a Boston Crab before transitioning into an STF and then a cravat, all within the space of a few seconds, only for Haskins to break the hold uh, by getting hold of the bottom rope by his fingertips. Haskins gets a second win with a series of kicks and a double stomp, uh, but he's only able to get a two count for his efforts. At the 20 minute mark of the match, uh, Haskins is finally able to apply his patented sharpshooter, but Walter is quick to turn it into another cravat before tumbling Haskins to the outside with another big boot. Haskins is dumped on his neck on the side of the ring before being hit with a tombstone pile driver in the centre of the ring. But the courageous Haskins is able to kick out by the skin of his teeth. Walter is finally able to end the match with a clubbing blow to the back of Haskins' neck before hitting a giant fire thunder driver for the pinfall victory to regain his progress world championship after 23 minutes. What a match. What a match and what a fight by Mark Haskins. Uh, he put up uh, an impressive uh, fight, several comebacks uh, against a very impressive Walter. I think Walter was just too big and too powerful and too rangy. Uh, the thing I like about Walter is he, he's not um, athletic in his style, um, but he's very diverse. Uh, he's definitely um, a powerful wrestler with lots of ground holes great at transitioning from one submission hold to another as we saw earlier from a, uh, an STF to a cravat to you know a sleeper hold all within a few seconds um, but uh, as Mark Haskins leaves the ring and uh, starts to make his way back up to the ramp uh, everybody in attendance is on their feet chanting in unison that this is Haskins great sign of appreciation there this match you've got to give four and a quarter stars out of five it was uh, it was every bit a, a solid main event. Um, yeah, so this was uh, another very good show. And uh, the highlights of this show being, in my opinion, Jordan Devlin versus Chris Ridgway. And of course, the main event that we've just uh, uh, reviewed, Walter versus Mark Haskins for the Progress World title. But let's be honest, you're always guaranteed an awesome show whenever Progress comes to town. And this show was no different. If you're listening to this podcast, you need to go uh, and sign up to Demand Progress. Uh, I know they have an app now, but you can just visit uh, the Progress Wrestling uh, website, uh, click on Demand Progress, which is their streaming service or their um, on-demand service, 
not only does it have um, every single chapter and every single show from Progress's um, history, but a lot of other independent wrestling organisations, which they also uh, show on the uh, on the channel from all over the world. Uh, I definitely recommend you sign up. Um, it's only seven ninety nine per month uh, to watch the main reason why British independent wrestling is as respected is as it is at the moment. I'll soon be reviewing Chapter 79, which took place a couple of weekends ago, uh, with some matches uh, involving Eddie Dennis versus Mark Haskins, uh, Mark Andrews versus Jordan Devlin, Isla Dawn versus Jordan Grace, and I think that's uh, her first Progress Wrestling uh, appearance. I'll confirm that on the review show. And, of course, Trent Seven's Atlas title open challenge. Um, hope to get that up for you soon. So keep listening to Wrestling the Johnners for your Progress Wrestling updates. Feel free to get in touch. Um, and my email address is wrestlingwithjohnners at gmail.com. You can also get in touch via my Twitter page, which is at withjohnners underscore WWJ. Or visit the YouTube page. Just search Johnners Wrestling. Thanks again for listening. And I hope you enjoyed this special episode. Take care and see you all soon.